Howdy y'all! Today we've got a sweet 2009 Dodge Challenger SRT8 in the shop for some repairs. Very nice vehicle. It's got 55,000 miles on it. History on this vehicle is it's Larry the Engineers, my dad. So he's been the owner of this vehicle since it was basically new. It had about 500 miles of test drives at the dealership it came from and you know it's now 10 years plus old she needs some repairs we were in the shop the other day for scheduled oil change and noticed coolant was a little low upon further inspection we've got a radiator that's leaking on top of that abs and traction control all the christmas trees are on on the dash yeah wheel speed sensor very very common repair for these so today we're gonna get it in the shop take a look at what has to be done I don't think it's too bad it's actually the first one I've ever done but you know YouTube certified right and uh, doesn't look like it's too bad of a job so let's get it in the shop and we'll talk a little bit more about why we're getting this car prepared Alrighty guys, back in the shop where it's not already 99 degrees out. Well, it's hot in Texas. So, here we are. Now, the reason for getting this car prepared, and well fixed, it needs to be fixed, but prepared is we're planning on taking this vehicle to the No Name Nationals. And um, Larry the Engineer, he needs someone to race. Now, I understand there's a member of the Bad Tree Productions crew, Mr. Terry, that is taking a 1973 Duster 340. Now, this car, 2009 SRT8, I think it'll be a nice battle of factory muscle cars, new versus old. Now, this one is basically stock. However, 4,500 pounds, 425 horse, that doesn't go a long way, unfortunately. And I think it'll be a pretty good race against a lightweight 340 A-body. So, Challenger versus Duster. Terry, if you'd like to take a little crack at this old Challenger, let us know, because you're being called out. And, um, yeah, it'll be a good race. Y'all can take a little nap at the tree you know, mosey on down the track. No need for any fierce competition here. No burnouts. Just going to have fun. So, we look forward to seeing you there, Terry. And, uh, we'll see who wins, right? Be a good race, I think. So, anyway, we've got to get a radiator in this vehicle, and we've got to get a wheel speed sensor on the right rear replace, which is one of those unfortunate problems with these late model Mopars is you know, it's a right rear today, a left rear next week, probably a right front in a month from now. They're notorious is what I'm saying. So, let's um, just get cracking here because, well, it's not getting any cooler out. Alrighty guys, here we are under the hood. The venerable 6.1 liter Hemi. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of plastic crap here that I know has to come off first. We've got to get the electric fan assembly at least off and probably out of here. Um, definitely going to require possibly taking the belly pan off. So, and obviously we need to drain the coolant. But 
let's just kind of get started here. I know that I think that these little guys are our first victims. Get them out. Pretty easy, I think. They're supposed to be anyway. Just like that. Looks like a lot of stuff's got to come apart here, guys. So, uh, I don't know. We'll uh, just see how far we can get here without completely disassembling the entire front clip. First things first, um, let's get it in the air and drain the antifreeze. Alright, now maybe I can get my arm in here to get this draining. Uh, should probably just go ahead and pull this off. Oh, yeah, nice. It's got all sorts of random bolts in there. Okay. I give up. Let's pull the belly pan. Alright, well let's uh well that's draining. We'll go ahead and get the old uh, fans out of there. We gotta get the intake tube off and we'll let that do it. Okay, first off. Let's get this little guy out of our way. Can let's just Okay, first things first, definitely we gotta get our upper radiator hose out of the way. And if y'all have never seen a pair of pliers like this before, they're a lifesaver on these late models with these stupid spring clamps, which, you know, they do their job. They're just a pain in the butt. And let's see if we can grab a hold of that clamp. Looks like we're going to have to do that one the hard way. Uh, let's see. Grab that with these. Oh, yeah. We're good. All right. radiator hose. Now I can get our fan connector. Well that's gone forever. Oh, Alright. Tuck that out of the way. And now we can get to our two 10 millimeters here for the fan assembly. Oops, sorry, eight millimeter. That's gone forever also. In theory, these little guys should slide on out of here. Just like that. Right, let's go ahead and get our lower radiator hose loose first on that side. Should be out in a jiffy, right? Nice thing is this one does not have any auxiliary transmission lines attached to it or anything, it's coolant only. These little tools like this guys, they are a lifesaver. As you just cannot imagine how much of a pain in the butt it is trying to get pliers or whatever you can do to get on these. And this one even with the tool, is definitely a tight squeeze. Got it? Maybe. Ah, got it. Alright. 
slide that down radiator hose a little bit. And release our clamp lower. That's good. Let's see. Oh, you'd think that the radiator would be empty by now. But no. That uh, looks like about a gallon of antifreeze on the concrete. Cool. My favorite. We're going to start with the ones that we can for sure get to. It looks like the condenser is mounted from the front of the radiator on the bottom. I'm really not too sure how we're going to get to that. Sure. And we need our two top brackets. Not drop that bolt down into the abyss. That would be nice. or vice versa. I don't know if we can get the power tool down in there or not, but I'm willing to try. That one's an 8-2. That one didn't go to the abyss either. Nice. Okay, so we've got two more at the very bottom of this sucker, and they are not going to be fun. And okay, get our little air dam on here off of that. Lowers are gonna be a tough son of a bee. Uh, okay, I can see that one now with the radiator tilted. That one, maybe. So it does look like I can get tool down in there. Another eight millimeter. That is a tight fit. And I wonder what that little bracket was supposed to be holding. Hard to say. Okay, so we have one more over on this side. It's not going to be fun, I don't think. I don't know. Quite sure how we're gonna get it back on. I sure wish I could just see it. Oh, there it is. I see it. Got it. Oh. Uh, how the hell am I gonna get it back on? 
think we are going to have to take the air box out. I think this will come out. Maybe. So much ant and grease. It's everywhere. Alright, and she's out. Again, not really too sure how we're going to get some of those screws back attached, but where there's a will, there's a way, right? Well, it looks like we've successfully captured about 36% of the antifreeze. Okay, we got it out. Where there's a will, there's a way, right? And uh, our leak was right over here on the bottom of this tank. Pretty common problem on these plastic and aluminum radiators. One little trick that I do is uh, always try and pre-thread these. They are just self-tapping plastic screws that cut their own threads and there are several of them there. We are going to attempt to get this radiator in the same way that one came out. Now obviously we want to try and avoid the damages there on our new piece. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take some of the original cardboard here and we're going to make a, a little shield right here that can be removed once it's in the car. morsel. Oh, okay. That's the worst one. guys radiators done we've got to do a speed sensor now back here on this right rear wheel uh, it follows that little tie rod arm and goes right into that little connector right there so yeah I believe that is held in with a little clip and we got a 10 millimeter holding it into the spindle there and should be able to change that out real quick alrighty guys that does it for today Challenger got a new radiator and a wheel speed sensor replaced I even managed to change the display and the radio from Spanish back to English which God knows how that happened but it's ready for a test drive Terry I hope you'll take us up on the call out it would be a pleasure to 
take these two really cool factory muscle cars, stock-ish, down the track. I think it'll be a good race. But that's all for today, guys. More Barracuda next week, maybe some wiring, and I've taken y'all's advice. The bumpers are going on as is. If we don't like them, we'll deal with it later. It's really not important, I think. <laughs> but I think they'll look all right. So anyway, guys, if you're not, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. We'll see you next time.